Hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Beacon 1.0. Uh, so this is a game that I've been following ever since its itch.io launch a couple years ago. Really enjoyed it. But effectively, you crash land on a planet and are trying to get off, and as part of it, you are finding... Emergency triage assessment. I don't think I need to read any of this, but, uh... You're finding, like, really cool guns, and also, like... Pilot deceased gene tech effectively to modify yourself that gives you new features and other new things so detected. i don't need the tutorial i like this extra stuff though it's it's very immersive in terms of like what this is effectively every run is a new clone and when i die i get sent back with an amount of the gene tech data that i had from the previous runs to apply to the new clone to potentially give me an upgrade it's Wild. It's kind of dark, but I like it. Okay. Oh, boy. I'll, I'll read it for this. It's been a while, and a lot of people might not have seen my previous videos. So, hey, Freya, look. Just bear with me here. But this is you writing this. Or, I guess, a clone version of the original you, because she died when the ship crashed into the side of the planet. Look, this is messed up, okay? I've had a look around outside of the crash, and I think I've started to get a handle on the situation. Oh, God. Yeah, you can see. Uh, that's why I'm writing this down, hoping this will get you up to speed. The ship is completely totaled. As you can probably see, the clone bay is still working, obviously. But pretty much everything else either is or was on fire. The ship's distress beacon is gone, too. It was gone by the time I came out, so I have no idea what happened to it. But listen, that thing is designed to survive crashes, so it's got to still be operational. As of right now, I'm still getting a signal for it on on the locator, so I'm gonna follow that. You'll see soon enough, but it's kind of a war zone out there. From where I'm standing, finding that beacon is literally our only hope to get out of here. I've seen enough dead versions of us to realize that I'm probably not going to be the one to make it. To be completely honest, you probably aren't either, but one of us will. We just have to keep going, okay? Keep trying. All right, nice pep top, good, good luck. What is this thing? Oh, okay. Just. Random resources, cool. Wait, oh, yeah, more stuff I can pick up. That was just a money boulder. Confusing. Okay, and a munitions crate, which gives me some HP, but also whatever this is. Scrap printer, print a random item after collecting 50 gibs. As part of the Think Green, Make Green initiative, your craft has been assigned a new Shoriteku interstellar scrap printer. Hiccups. Congratulations, when employed in the field, compact and portable devices will happily consume industrial waste, scrap metal, unclaimed organs, and many other types of detris detritus fed into its recycle hole. Upon reaching the required material threshold, the scrap printer will reward the ecologically minded employee with a random reconstituted item for their personal use. Remember, resources aren't free, but you don't have to be the one paying the fee. Okay. So I can't even pick up spare health kits, unfortunately. Alright. Anyway. So these are this is the remains of her ship. And then we rocket ourselves in the distance and off we go. So it's kind of a twin stick shooter. If you've seen synthetic, you've probably seen something pretty similar uh, to this. It operates under a lot of the same logic as like Enter the Gungeon and whatnot, but with maybe like a little bit more realistic gun handling. Maybe. Kind of depends what you're looking for. Um, I don't remember if you can jam. Oh, oh. Wow, that was rude. Okay, do not mess with that. And I'm pretty sure these are explosive. I guess it's not that realistic. It just shows you how much, um, like how far your your bullets can deviate here. Let's just pop into this thing. I love the low poly modeling for this game. It's it's very low poly and yet incredibly detailed. Uh, it creates this. What is this? Rotate prism. I'm assuming that's where I wanted to go or needed to go. Maybe. Pretty sure this doesn't do anything. Wait. If I pushed it up, 
No. I thought I thought for a hot second. Ow. Okay, do not walk into the beam. It like lit up for a hot second there. I think that might be a bug. I'm gonna assume I have to light that up some way. I got a map. Maybe? Okay. Looks like I can go down here. So I think we want to light that up. Oops. Now, did it do damage to the turrets? It doesn't look like it. Okay. Here we go. I haven't played this game in a long time. I kind of missed it. It's weird. It's one of those roguelikes that I feel... I don't know... I don't know how to describe it. Every once in a while I run into roguelikes like this. Oh, okay, so that's... That's just full of resources. I'll take it, especially because I've taken some damage. So it doesn't seem like there's much of that, but I think we're gonna wanna just break all of them. Oh. That just blew up. Okay, activate flux node, grab that, get more money. Get more money. What is this? I think these are grenades. I don't think there's anything else for me to even mess with here. Ooh. Okay, don't get stuck on that. And it's making weird ping noises, like there's something I can do with it. Nope, don't go that way. Okay. Well, I'm going to assume my work here is done. Because I think it is. I don't think there's anything else I can do with that one. Neat puzzle, though. Whee. But yeah, one of those roguelikes that... I don't know if it was, like, before its time or how I would describe it. But it's one of those that it never quite got its level of... Yeah, walk right into the engine, why don't you? Smart buddy. I right, can go back. It never got the recognition I think it deserves, but I feel like that's very true of quite a lot of games where it's just weird enough or just challenging enough or just niche enough. Okay, destructible with an explosive. Let's not be there when that falls. I don't actually know if that would do damage to me, but I don't want to risk it. V6 FK split kill. Description Starborn Scout. A Additional notes. Part of the larger lot of recovered starborn materials under prism development. The closest weapon that subject is analo analogous to would be a sniper rifle, though it lacks a trigger mechanism. As such, instead subjects require the user to charge each shot. This is combined with a compounding level of holographic splinters delivered by the bullet, which is increased the longer the charge is held. Phrase notes. I don't know if I'm totally sold on the changes I made here, but there's absolutely no way I'm going to be able to undo them, so I guess I'll make the best of it. From what I can tell, I've somehow doubled the payload from a full charge, but the ammo pool seems to be about half, I think? I don't know. This is what I get for messing around with stuff I don't understand, I guess. So, mega hollow needle, charge to increase amount of splinters on impact, low ammo capacity. Cool. Yeah, it does not. It holds three. Though, I think... After that point, all I have to do is just reload it. There's no, like, fiddly bits where I have to worry uh, too much of, about finding more ammo drops. It doesn't do that. Only thing I got to do that for is, uh, is grenades. Whoa. Okay. It's certainly weird. Yeah, luckily I can still use both. I like the idea of the split kill. It seems like it's maybe not so good against single targets. But it's probably real good in group fight situations. What is this? Oh. Raptor nest. I don't... I did not see where that came from. But that's okay. Eat egg. 
Okay. And I have no idea what you are. Well, got that. Alright, let's just keep distance and miss horribly. Is that... Ow. Ow! Rot spore. Okay, so... So the raptors, the raptors are bombers. They're not, okay, good to know. Well, it's fine. I'm probably gonna just stick with the regular pistol for now. I like the, sni the, uh, the splinter needle. I think it's neat. But it's a little worrying all the same. Fly drop core, item Metadata not found. Scanned results below. The semi-translucent internals of the fly drop fauna, a native species often found close to shallow or stagnant water. Though small, the harvested organs appear to be greatly beneficial to human stamina. Recovery. Carcinogenic materials detected as being present within the tissue, though not in sufficient quantities to have an adverse effect. At least in the short term. So, consumable item, I think... And it reduces my stamina recovery so I can dodge more. Now that's a cave. Is this where I want to go? Because I, th I think I want to go up here. So yeah, I can go into this. Okay, don't stand in the weird muck puddle. There's something up above, but I can't do much with it. So we want to go down. Whoop. Okay. I'm just actually not doing too terribly. There's definitely a lot of confusion that comes on comes along with this as I actually have not I've not played this game in some time and they seem to have added a tremendous amount of content oh okay so the rot find just slows me down there we go so it's nothing immediately to worry about I wonder if I can kill the origin point on it no it doesn't look like it okay we want to go down here But how? I'm gonna throw a grenade, see if that does anything to the splinters. It does not. What is this? This is a booster. So that gets me back up here, but that's not really what I'm going for. I want to see what's in in this item. Or this item. There we go. Bit hurty. Anything else here? Out what? Invisible jerk. Okay. Well, it looks like this leads somewhere. Temporarily blinded. Still not a problem. Still not a problem. And plenty of healing items, so we don't have to worry too much. Who are you? I don't know, but you don't look like you should remain here. It's goopy. Is this anything or no? Can I check the map? Local interference. So it doesn't seem like there's anything here. Hmm. Oh, print an item. I gotta remember to actually use the scrap printer. Focus injector. Swap. Never miss your mark. So this just gives accuracy and reload speed. I'm not gonna read all of these just because. I really gotta remember to use more of this stuff. If I break these... What was... This? I'm gonna throw another. Rot find infestation slows movement. Doesn't do anything beyond that. Okay. Oh! And this is open now. Fortified DNA. Rot spore repeater. Weapon. Swap or recycle? 
A hybrid of plant and animal materials, apparently intentionally crafted into a weapon of sorts. The device takes advantage of the plant's instinct to disperse its pollen when sensing danger. Upon hitting a target, the rot vine needle will burst apart in an attempt to spread its DNA in as wide of an area as possible. Due to the sharpness of the needle and the velocity which it is fired, the needle will already be deeply embedded within the target at such a time. The resulting effect is akin to a small explosive detonating inside a target's body. Slow projectile speed slowly regenerates ammo. I'm probably gonna... Recycle this. Nematode coating. Nematode ammo. Chance to nematode mega explode on killing blow. What? Treated with extracts taken from the nematode species. It is posited that upon terminating a, uh, terminating a target with this ammunition, a reaction will take place in their corpse similar to that of the nematode. That is, rapid and forceful expansion and explosion. This project is in its early stages and should not be used in testing without further extensive research. That's pretty good. All right. And I think that's the item that I was supposed to get here. I don't think there's anything else. And we're good. I don't know what those triangles are. Oh, we have unfriendlies. So it fires kind of homing shots that explode. All right, that's kind of fun. I don't have the ability to reload it though, so I have to just kind of wait. Neat. I don't know if I'm gonna hold on to it, but it seems kind of useful to just, uh, you know, just pile out the bullets and then uh, switch to another gun while I wait for it to recharge. Like I said, the weapons on this game are kind of wild. I really dig it. What is this? Hello. Master Scavenger Shop. Oh. Can I talk to him? No. So how much money do I have? Not much. It looks like I can snag a little bit of currency just kind of left on the ground. But it looks like if I want... If I actually want to buy any of these, it's a no-go. Because these are too expensive. I don't even know what half of these things are. Like, some of them look neat, but yeah, I can't afford. So what's the point? Okay, back to that. Is there anything else? Like, something here? Whoop. That actually jump scared me. Okay, we get more rot fine, but that's not a problem. What's over here? I have no idea, actually. Uh, swap or... Oh, Rotten Needle Bombs. Okay, so they fire projectiles. Oh, I see. Yeah, let's start just recycling some of these items. Let's print a new thing with the scrap printer. Which I'm probably going to just replace. Oh, it gave me some HP. Alright. I'm digging the scrap printer. I'm probably going to keep it around unless there's something immediately better like a med kit. Oh. And that like locks them in. That's cool. Now, can I get bits out of this? Maybe. What are you? Oh, it's an egg. Okay. Just give him some needles. And yeah, the big explosions. We still on plasma? Yeah. Ooh, hello. Missed this previously. New codex entry, basalt crab. Craft. Right. Are all these just yeah, healing nests? Nothing I need to con consider. Oh. Okay, so they have active camo. I will keep that very much in mind. Active camo and some kind of retaliatory attack. Okay, let's just give them some needles. There we go, those should explode in short order. Doesn't seem like there's anything else here. Oh, let's 
grab this. And go up here. Secret little area. It has a bunch of goodies. Uh, eggs? A lot of eggs. Eggs, yolk, and whatnot. Now, can I get up even further? No. Doesn't look like it. Ow. Falling damage is a jerk. But it's fine. If I check the map, it doesn't seem like there's anything else I'm missing. So onwards and upwards. Okay. Anything here? Nah. Nothing in these. I love the just kind of atmosphere of this game. It's very... I don't want to use the word isolated. Whoops. Oh. They just go for whatever the target is. Yeesh. And yeah, I want to hit this guy with the electric aura. As he's hurting me right in. Oh. Do I have a melee attack? I don't know if I do or don't. Right, there he goes. And this guy's got shields. Don't think that'll save him, though. Anything else? No, it doesn't look like it. And keep checking that map. There's a gun here. A couple of things here. Pop the scrap printer. So we have a pulse rifle. I mean, it's got to be better than the pistol. Idea behind the Tesla pulse rifle is a simple one. Deliver the best possible accuracy and damage available in a single shot light rifle. It's with great pride that we can announce that we have achieved this goal by lowering the velocity of each, each projectile. We've been able to imbue each shot with unprecedented power and unearing trajectory, transferring incredible damage upon contact with the target. Due to a reduced projectile speed, we envision the pulse rifle to be used from a stationary position aimed towards a choke point to minimize the potential movement of the target. Cool. Pen penetrates targets. That's fun. And we get an ammo mod. Incendiary ammo. So chance to ignite on hit. Rest, rest of these are good. And focus injector. Should probably actually use these bombs. What is this? Proximity mine. Nah. I just don't remember to use them. That's the thing. Plus the extra money means I might be able to get some neat mods for my trouble. So beacon locator, checkpoint. We got some healing items, but we don't need them. Found half of the secrets available in this game. Yeah, they they really like to have weird little secret bits hidden off to the side. I'm not great at finding them. I mean, I found half of them. That's not terrible. But I wish I could find more. Reminds me of Tower of Guns, where it always just taunts me just a little bit. Whew. Okay. So, I thought things might be a bit rough when I set out. But this is... This was kind of chaos. You know how people say nothing could have prepared me for this? I literally died crash landing here and I was still unprepared. I got here though. It seems like things were calming down a bit, so I took the opportunity to set up a small camp and recuperate. Things currently working in my favor. I'm making progress. The beacon locator is actually working. I've stayed alive for two consecutive days. There are things to worry about though. The landscape seems like it's changing as I get further from the ship. Those bugs were already all over the place, but here it looks like this is their territory. They don't just hang around here, they've actually started building. That might be a bit of a strong word, but they're sure as hell doing something here. It seems like they're, they've covered anything they can find in that luminous goo, almost creating basic structures. We need to stay on guard, guard here. They seemed territorial before. This is their home turf, I can't imagine it's going to get easier. Alright, we've got some stuff to discover, and off we go. I'll try and keep an eye on secrets, but who knows. So it's not a very strong weapon, but I can fire a fair bit of it. And the reload time isn't too bad. Okay, I can delete most of these. Colony is destructible. There we go. Grab a little bit of HP. Not that we need any of it. And off we go. So the pulse rifle is not necessarily an amazingly good weapon. However, its main benefit is I can fire a lot of it, I can reload it, and it does strike through. Which goes a long way. 
Okay, boost pad. I'm trying to keep an eye out for anything that I might miss. But threats remaining six. Okay, here's where it's incredibly useful. Okay. Stay away from the grenades. Speaking of, I actually have grenades. Threats remaining four. Let's just pepper them for a little while. Oh, right. And that's just totally out of juice. It's fine. It means I can kind of just ignore it. Okay, and then all that's left is this guy. Unfortunately, this is not the most accurate gun. Makes it a little tougher. Looks like we're fine, though. No threats remaining. Any goodies in any of these? Not overwhelmingly. And we got some spore bits. Oh, but we're full up. Okay, so if I check the map, where are we going? We're going to the right. Because left is progress, and I never want to progress until I've gotten all the other goodies. Unless, of course, I already have all more than enough goodies and I can just head for the end. But in roguelikes, that is literally never true. I don't know what you are. Oh, it's a bomber creature. Rude. Um. Well, this seems spooky. Flores Sanctum Cash. Oh, they. They do jump slams. Okay, and there's there are a bunch of them. And I don't know if these flyers are endless. They certainly feel like it. I'm just going to toss that off for the time being. Hopefully that'll hit something while I'm here. No more blaster birds. Oh, I do not appreciate these guys just landing on me with minimal warning. Whew. Okay, seems like there might just be this guy at this point. Why is everything here explosive? No! My log! Actually took the scan log with it. Funny. And kind of funny. A little frustrating. This... This area really does look super demonic. Well, nothing to worry about, I guess. E to open, what do we get? A Scorched Choker. Alright. Uh, passive health regen set, max health to 75. Health regen delayed for 8 seconds when damaged. That's not bad, actually. A blackened ring of dimensions approximate to the, approximately the same size as the human neck, hence the chosen description. If applied to bare skin, the recipient reports feeling rejuvenated, and indeed their ability to heal appears increased. At the same time, however, they appear to only heal up to a certain point, at a threshold some way below the normal abilities of a human. Further tests are needed to see if we can reduce this trade-off, but initially very pro promising. So, okay, so that's just a passive. We can get rid of the Rotten Needle Bombs. There's also a Repentant Dagger. Throw Lifesteal Daggers. Uncertain origin, though the ornate decorations covering the hills hint at some form of mysticism or sacrifice. The blade is incredibly sharp. An accident upon acquisition caused one of the team to cut themselves, losing a surprising amount of blood. They reported after the fact, however, they felt fine, resilient even, ready to face anything. Perhaps some treatment to the blade that acts as a primitive form of administering an antibiotic. Okay, so ten daggers or the... Regen choker. Regen choker. 100%. This so means I don't have to worry too much about damage as long as I'm not taking too much all at once. More base DNA. Anything else around here? Like I said, place looks positively satanic. Ooh. 
Tidal Wave. I think it's a shotgun? Megasonic Wave penetrates targets low range, low fire rate. Be the weapon that's making waves in the security industry. The Prism S7 Sonic Shotgun is the ideal tool for corps and governments alike. Thanks to an innovative new emitter that shoots a wide sonic barrier rather than a single spread of projectiles. Where a previous weapon might have hit a single target, the S7 hits the room. The sonic barrier penetrates through any targets that come into contact with it, making it extremely effective in close quarters for crowd control. Please note that non-lethal variants are currently unavailable. Okay, so it looks like it's possibly increased the range and spread of this thing. But I've had to sacrifice half the magazine size in the process to keep it stable. My thinking was, if you can hit more stuff from a, from a greater distance, you shouldn't need as many shots anyway, right? Sure. And bone slivers. Chance to deal heavy damage on hit. Neat. So can I check that? Current build. So these are the items that I have. So it looks like a number of these, the, the ammo mods might just be universal. Like, I don't have to pair them with a specific weapon. If that's the case, I'm a happy camper. Okay, don't shoot those. Sacrificial Shrine. Trade health for equipment. Sure. New passive. Enlil's Favor. Fall damage heals. Subject, okay. Uh, subject is a small ornament carved from stone. It depicts something akin to an earth cow or bull with multiple pairs of horns. It's not yet understood how this specimen works, but it seems to interact with personal gravity of the holder, allowing them to better withstand long falls. NB, specimen comes from one of the lab techs who clearly wanted someone to ask what it meant. Please ensure nobody does. Oh, I see, Enlil's favor. Neat. Yeah, this wasn't in the game the last time I played. This weird satanic region and a bunch of other stuff. I dig it. And yeah, sacrificing health for uh, for items means nothing when I just have free heal up to 75 HP. We Now this is good. I I was very curious when I played a little over a year ago. How much there was left to be added, but the answer actually seems to be quite a lot. And I'm happy for it. I mean, it seems like this is one of those games that uh, truly needed, I guess, a long period of early access to iron out the bugs, add a bunch more stuff. I remember it certainly had some performance issues back when it first came out. Okay, let's just switch back to this. I like the shotgun, but that reduced ammo capacity is a little painful. So the thing that's really getting me is the uh, reload speed. That is something I'm going to have to work on, maybe. I Mostly, I think I just got to remember to reload is the real answer. DNA mod, three times one stat. Now if I check, there is an area below. I don't know how to get to it safely. So it might not be below. It could be above. Because that looks like progress. This looks like something. What is that? What are these? Destructible with explosives. Um, so here's the problem. I only have one grenade. Scrap printer. Oh. Dang. Apparently the scrap cell is this. Nope, that just hurt me. It's fine. I guess we go back. I'll see if I can get some grenades, but my chances aren't as high as I'd like it to be. 
Oh yeah, we still have that higher up area, if I can figure out how to get to it. There we go, nothing out of that. Nothing here. It's not gonna be in one of these. The upper area looks like it might be a secret, more than anything else. Which is unfortunate, because I'm terrible at finding those. And it's not like you can just look them up. Well, let's go through here. We'll see what happens. Oh, no. It's not a secret. It just takes me down here. Neat. Probably should have just fought him. But whatever. Ow. Kind of rude. I guess it doesn't really matter. What else do we have around here? A lot of egg. I'm not sure if killing these... Like, what is more practical? Killing the eggs or killing the critters? I guess we'll find out as we, we go further in. Uh, anything else here? No. Is that nice down there? A lot of these. A lot of vents and geysers. Ooh. You were sneaky. Okay, and it turns out this whole... Whoa, that was... a thing. Okay, uh, let's go around. Yeah, the shotgun apparently has limited range. Or not limited range, but uh, if there's an enemy... Okay, there's one grenade. I think we do have something up above. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to it, though. Maybe, maybe not, actually. What about over here? Because we have that. We have egg. Egg. It's got a crown. It's probably got to be some kind of... It's special. Yeah, because that guy had the the little rot, rot vine shooters. We got those. I don't know. How much do we want to bet I just have to kill every egg to get through maybe one of these if I can? I'm just going to not care about damage as much. Right now, nothing is particularly dangerous to me. And so instead of being ultra cautious, I'm probably just going to go forward. Especially because there's a lot of... There's a lot of egg. And just other healing items just all over the place for me to grab. Volatile DNA. Speed, health, luck. Fair. It doesn't look like it's this. Unless I have to break these. Could be. It's either egg or it's those things. I'm just going to break whatever. Ooh. This guy's uh, got two crowns. I, I'm assuming two crowns means like two special abilities that I should kind of watch out for. Kinda. Okay. Hey. This is something. Oh, reach within ten minutes to unlock. Oh. Well, that ain't happening. Oh, that ain't gonna get it. Can't break that, but I. Kind of don't want to fire that. Let's go back down over here. Because this is clear now. Gets me whatever this is. A bone bouncer. I'm going to get rid of the tidal wave in favor of the bone bouncer. Fires bonerang, semi-automatic, bouncing projectile, stuns on hit, low ammo capacity, low fire rate. A basic projectile weapon constructed from biological matter and utilizing the elasticity of animal sinew to power its shots. This slingshot mechanism allows for fast ejection of certain disc-shaped bone objects that, once fired, stay airborne through rapid rotation, bouncing between anything they hit to cause damage to multiple targets per shot. That sounds fun. And we get Tesla ammo. Neat. Okay, I don't see anything else here. 
Looks like there's still ship munitions and a shop up above. I bet I'd probably take the the big vent. Take me away. Wee! Oh wow. Okay. Weapons are down here, but we don't have to worry about falling damage. We've also got that. There's also just a regular assault rifle. Sure, why not? We understand the demands of today's interplanetary connect, uh, corporation. Sometimes even with the, even the best will in the world, diplomacy, even with the best will in the world, diplomacy just doesn't work out. Merger gone south, buyer with cold feet, ex-CEO not quite as retired as you'd like. Whatever the reason, make sure your enforcement teams are armed with the best. The Kaiser Schmid V1 per assault rifle. Boost in industry defining rate of fire. More than earning its reputation for quickly delivering a shipment of bullets into, or at least in the direction of, your enemies. After all, when there are multiple targets, low accuracy is just an opportunity to hit someone new. Sure, and let's get rid of the pulse rifle. And we get money. What is this? More stuff and an adrenaline ejector, which I'm just gonna recycle. No more grenades. Also, is this like a tent? It is. Oh. No, that's just to get me back up. We want to go down further. Big falling damage is not a worry to me. It looks like there is actually something over here too. Maybe? No, it's just a flare. Dang. Probably just tell me I can hop down to here and then get to the tent. But I just kind of yeeted because, well, yeeted. What is, what is the opposite of yeet? I don't know, I guess, no. Is falling, can you yeet yourself in a downward direction? I, I guess you can, but it feels like you need to do a little bit more of a fling in the process. Boy, they really want me to go up, don't they? See if I get lucky. Okay, scavenger shop. Oh, what? Bouncer is really strong. Sporling pods. Small cluster of pods, each containing an unknown quantity of larval solus sporlings. Through careful examination and dissection of the pods, one may be able to gain substantial insight into the solus anatomy, therefore being able to pick one shots more carefully and increasing any critical damage sustained by solus targets. Huh. Well, might as well print an item. Maybe he got mad because I picked up all the scrap on the ground. Start in injector. Nah, give me the money. Though it seems like the shop has, um... Broken on me. Either that or this one went mad. I don't really know. One way or another. I... I guess that was that. I also got a ton of grenades. Wow! Okay, so this weapon is absurdly strong. Its lack of range is not much of a problem for me. Anyway, time to find out if I... Yeah, I don't take any falling damage. Sweet. So... Bit of a detour, we're gonna go back here. Because we had this. Not necessarily a secret. Okay. I also want to just kind of hang out here and wait for this to go back down. Okay. So I'm aiming in the right direction, but it was too high. I gotta wait until it's a little higher. And if I miss this time, then oh well. Now. Got it. 
Is there another one? Um? Security uplink. I guess I broke it. I'm very confused as to what that did, but maybe it did something good. Maybe it cut down on the number of enemies that I have to deal with. I have no idea. That's part of the fun of it. Alright, let's get out of here. We've more than grabbed a ton of upgrades, and we're gonna go. So, I should probably mention, as we're getting pretty close to a good stopping point for this episode, this game is uh, not that short. It's The runs take usually about an hour or two, but you can save between every level. Uh, obviously, I'll have to do some research and maybe try and get to the end of a run to find out whether or not I can get um, all the way there. Oh. We already got this. He is quite dead and there's nothing else here. There's a, a marker. Global timer. Reach within two minutes to unlock. Odd. Okay, and heavy mun munitions located. I want to play in that space. Oh, boy. Okay, so I need to watch out a little bit. I like this. Ah. I like the sound effects on this thing. It is weird. Paramount DNA. And some other stuff. We're full on grenades, and there's nothing else here. Just blow that up for no reason than because I can. Give me more Granada. You're good. We don't have to worry about HP because I am magically delicious. I don't really do not know what I'm saying. I've got the choker. I was thinking of choking and then it made me think of food. Sonic Cannon. Oh, is this gun. I like this gun, actually. And we got another incendiary ammo. I didn't miss anything important there. No, we, we got the heavy munitions. As I always gotta check. I don't know why Magically Delicious made me think of... Or Choking made me think of Magically Delicious and vice versa, but... Here we are. So won't we'll let me get in there. Oh, maybe it'll let me get in there after... Uh, you know, in the next region. That's probably exactly the case. And I got 100% of the secrets that time. Okay, so I'm going to revise it. Yeah, actually, it's about two hours to finish a run. Each region takes shy of 20 minutes, 25 minutes, give or take. Uh, and there's six regions overall. So that actually, that's not too long. It's kind of in the vein of Atomic Crops. But I can save and quit uh, between the runs, which is kind of nice. Or between the levels. And so I think that's going to be what I do here. Let's just go out to the main menu for a bit. So Beacon is available 1.0. It's been out for quite some time, but it's available now on Steam in 1.0. It is, I mean, more or less what you've seen is what you get so far. It's really slick. It looks great. The music is fantastic. And like, it truly is one of those like absolute indie gems that I'm honestly shocked more people haven't tried this one. It's super good. And it's 20 bucks, which I think is more than fair for the amount of content you get. Yeah, every run is, tw uh, is two hours. But where you really get into the meat of this game is once you start messing with your genome, getting some interesting mutations, a bunch of major stat upgrades, playing around with some of the really interesting weapons, and so on and so forth. Like, there's a lot to love in Beacon, and I want to play some more of it. So I might. I might fit some in. But for now, at least, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. Helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new indie games every single day, hit subscribe, because I got tons of them to check out. But for now, happy holidays, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.